Hello there. In the past couple of videos, we have dealt with several different types of problems associated to the normal distribution, the standard normal distribution, and probabilities associated to them, including the sample mean. In this video, we're going to be looking at arbitrary linear combinations of normal random variables and how you can deal with problems associated to probabilities between them. So the main idea that we're going to be focused on is centered around this theorem that I have stated here. Let A and B be real numbers and let X and Y both be independent normal random variables. So they are IID random variables in case you are familiar with that term. So then we're going to define a new random variable Z which is defined by the linear combination of X and Y. So as long as X and Y are independent normal random variables this new variable we have introduced, the linear combination of x and y, also is a normal random variable. I'm not going to prove this theorem here, so I'm just going to leave it as an exercise to those of you who already have some theoretical background on how to prove these types of things, such as moment generating functions, for example. So let us look at a particular example on how we can actually use this particular theorem to solve probability problems. So let us begin by defining a few um, variables to work with. So let x be the amount of time spent on an exercise warm-up. And then we're going to define a few other variables too. I'm going to define y and z. So b is going to be the amount of time spent on an exercise routine. And then Z is going to be the amount of time spent on exercise cooldown. So I'm going to assume, assume X, Y, Z are all independent, 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 normal random variables such that the following means and standard deviations apply. So the mean for x, or the expected value of x, is going to be 8.1 minutes. The mean of y is going to be equal to 42.3 minutes. The mean of z is going to be equal to 3.1 minutes. Let's also define some standard deviations as well. Let's define the standard deviation for x to be equal to 1.2 minutes the standard deviation for y to be equal to 5.2 minutes, and the standard deviation for z to be equal to 0 0.7 minutes. So you should already be familiar with how to solve some basic probability problems um, associated to single uh, variable of things. So for example, we can solve basic probability problems. For example, what is the probability that a randomly selected person from this population uh, has a amount of time spent on an exercise warm-up longer than nine minutes. So we know that we can easily find this area by integrating from nine to infinity of one divided by sigma x square root of two pi times e to the minus one half x minus mu x divided by sigma x, the quantity squared, dx. So once you actually work out this integral using either Desmos or some other numerical method, you can find that this probability is approximately equal to 0 0.2266. Similarly, you can uh, answer, say, another problem. Uh, what is the probability that, say, y is less than or equal to 35 minutes? So what is the probability that your exercise routine like the main exercise part, is less than 35 minutes. So that's just going to be equal to the integral from minus infinity to 35 of 1 divided by, so now we're working on y, so this is going to be sigma y square root of 2 pi times e to the minus 1 half x minus mu y over sigma y squared dx. And again, once you work out this numerical integral, you're going to find that that's going to be approximately equal to 0 0.80. Two. So 0 0.802. And again, 
You can solve problems such as, what is the probability that your warm-up is less than seven minutes and your cooldown is less than one minute? So as you already know, x and, y, x and z are independent random variables, so the probability of event one and event two is just going to be the product of the probabilities. So this is going to be the product of uh, the probability that x is less than seven minutes times the probability that z is less than one minute. So this is going to be equal to the integral from minus infinity to seven of one over sigma x square root of two pi e to the minus one half x minus mu x all over sigma x dx and then we're going to multiply that integral by the integral from minus infinity to 1 of 1 all over sigma z square root of 2 pi e to the minus 1 half x minus mu z all over sigma z dx. So once you work out these two uh, independent integrals, we're going to find that that's going to be approximately equal to 0 0.1797 multiplied by 0 0.0013. Uh, which is going to be approximately equal to 0 0.0002, right? So that is nothing new. That's just probabilities on single uh, variable uh, normal probability problems. So what about linear combinations? So now I'm going to introduce a new variable. So I'm going to define S. So this is going to be called my exercise value score and you can create your own type of linear combination between these variables uh, and you can determine what that meaning of that variable is of course. Let's define it to be equal to 0 0.5 of x plus 0 0.4 of y plus 0 0.1 of z. So if you look here the sum of these coefficients is equal to 1, right? So we're pretty much weighting the warm-up, the cool-down, and the actual exercise routine a little bit um, differently. So if you sort of look at this, we're pretty much weighing the warm-up extremely more uh, than the rest of these things. So of course you can weigh these in different ways. You can also average these values and divide each of those values by that. And that's going to give you some other number. You know, there's different ways to define uh, the value or the quality of a particular exercise. Uh, but let's just work with uh, this particular thing. So what do we know? So since x, y, and z are independent normal random variables, then since s is a linear combination of those independent normal random variables, that means s also is a normal random variable. So we can do probabilities on s now. So what is the probability? Their your exercise value score is, you know, bigger than 20 or something like that. But in order to calculate those probabilities, you need to calculate the mean and the variance, or the standard deviation, uh, of this random variable as well, so you know what to sort of integrate here, right? So let's start off with calculating the mean of s, which again is the expected value of s. So we know the expected value of s is going to be equal to the expected value of 0.5x, plus 0.4y plus 0.1z. And we know by the properties of expected values, we can distribute over the sum and factor out the constants. So this is going to be equal to 0.5 times the mean of x plus 0.4 times the mean of y plus 0.1 times the mean of z. So once we plug in all of those numbers that we had uh, for mu x, mu y, and mu z, so 8.1, 42.3, and 3.1, you can get that the mean of S, or the mean of the exercise value score, is going to be 21.28. So we don't have properties for standard deviations, but we do have properties for variances. So let's figure out what the variance of S is. So the variance of S, or VAR of S, is going to be equal to the variance of 0.5x, plus 0.4y, plus 0.1z. So as long as x, y, and z are independent, we can distribute over the sum. If they're not independent, you have to introduce the covariance term, 
uh, that we talked about a little bit earlier. And all these constants have to quadratically factor out of the variance expression. So that's going to give us 0 0.5 squared times the variance of x plus 0 0.4 squared times the variance of y plus 0 0.1 squared times the variance of z. So remember we were given the standard deviations of 1.2, 5.2, and 0.7. We need to square each of those values and then substitute them into this expression. So once you do that, you're going to find that the variance of s is going to be equal to 4.6913. And that means the standard deviation is just going to be the square root of this number, which is going to be approximately to 2.16. So we have our mean and we have our standard deviation. So mu of s is equal to 21.28. And the standard deviation for s is equal to 2.1659. And since s is a normal random variable, we can use the normal distribution and integrals in order to solve problems on s. So for example, what is the probability that your exercise value score is larger than 23. So this is just going to be equal to the integral from 32 to infinity of 1 all over sigma s times the square root of 2 pi times e to the minus 1 half x minus mu s all over sigma s, the quantity squared, dx. So once you work out that integral, you're going to find that that's going to be approximately equal to 0 0.2136. Right? So that's how you do probabilities on linear combinations of random variables. Now, just as a side note, if these variables, so remember, if we have some population, right? Uh, let's assume this population is normally distributed. And then we take out a simple random sample, say of size n, from this population. So this is just full of x1, x2, down to, say, xn. So these are all normal random variables as well. So using these things, and let's assume that this population has a mean mu x and sigma x. So one can derive those properties that we proved before with the central limit theorem one can show that mu x bar is equal to the expected value of bar, which is actually going to be equal to just mu x. And you can also prove that the sigma x bar is going to be equal to, of course, the standard deviation of x bar, which is going to be equal to sigma x over the square root of n. And that's only if you're taking a sample from a normally distributed population. And of course, all of these values have to be independent uh, from one another, right? So the property associated to the central limit theorem says it doesn't really matter what the distribution of uh, the population is, but if the population is normally distributed, usually uh, these values, uh, mu x bar, is going to converge to mu x, and sigma x bar will converge to sigma x over the square root of m a lot quicker than compared to populations that has distributions that are not normal. So that is just some special properties and problems that you can solve using linear combinations of normal random variables. Hope you enjoyed. As always, if you enjoyed, please like this video, consider leaving a comment, and if you enjoy the channel content, please subscribe. We publish several new topics every single week. Thank you.